so welcome back students to one more session of your structure of atom so yesterday we had a very good session speaking to speaking to you all i i thought you know it's a quite interactive session i expect you all to send your comments if you have any further queries right so today the topic which i'm going to deal is the part b if i have to say part a is completely your you know which you have studied about cathode rays anode rays discovery of neutron thomson's model rutherford's model millikan oil drop experiment all that are the basic things now we'll be starting with the part p concept that is nature of electromagnetic radiations from now the topic which i'm going to deal has n number of numericals different different numericals from different different concepts which are there so cbsc wants you to learn every topic learn the concept and do the numerical immediately fine so here when i have to speak about the wave theory of radiations so what what topics are there under this if i have to clearly or spe start uh, specifically give you the information here uh, Uh, in cbs according to your cbs syllabus you'll be studying about maxwell's theory like it's a basic theory what like the most important theory but the information about the wave wave form then you'll be learning about the electromagnetic spectrum and from the electromagnetic spectrum gradually we'll be doing different numericals which are related to the characteristics of the wave then i'll be taking you into a different topic that is heisenberg if i have to say it is not different it is all related one after the other before that i'll be teaching you a topic called dual nature of light or dual nature that is your wave nature and particle nature from the dual nature we'll be learning a concept called that is the postulate which is led by heisenberg uncertainty principle i'll also be teaching you what is schrodinger wave equation see in chemistry part it's basically only a substitution and knowing what what terms are there it is not like physics where you go into the depth of the topic after shorting the equation i'll be gradually doing uh, as i said you know numericals which are related to that after i complete all those next we'll come to an essay type question that is bohr's atomic model in bohr's atomic model i'll be teaching you hydrogen spectrum there we'll be learning lyman series balmer paston p1 all the series we'll be learning and we'll be doing different different numericals on that after that concept i'll be taking you into a uh, next topic that is if i have to say that is part c where i'll be teaching you about quantum numbers maybe after all these things we'll go to that topic right so when i have to speak about the wave nature or wave theory of radiations the first important wave theory after huygens was given by maxwell maxwell wave theory so what did he say he just said one important word what is that he said first first of all we are speaking about light isn't it right light is a form of energy and he said whenever light travels or light is transmitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation that is what he said so i'm speaking in i'm just explaining i'm giving you an idea of what he is trying to explain i'm not going to the physical physics of this concept so what is the first thing maxwell said light is transmitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation right now what is this when i have to see okay light is in the form of energy right so now said electromagnetic radiation now we said light travels it shows dual nature we said that is both in the wave nature and particle nature suppose when we assume it in the form of a wave nature just see this is the path of the wave this is path of the light when the light travels in the form of a wave what what are you observing both the electrical field as well as magnetic field are acting on the light just see here this is represented by the magnetic field or the magnetic wave or the magnetic field you can say which we measure in tesla that is b and next comes the electrical field also acting that's denoted by capital e so what is happening in the path of the propagation of light both the magnetic field as well as electrical field they are acting perpendicular to the propagation of light let us write that second thing electrical field electrical and magnetic field act just now what did we say just see this angle and this angle they act perpendicularly to the part of the wave 
okay this is also done and after this what is important this electromagnetic wave because both the electrical and magnetic field are active we call we call this as electromagnetic wave and for this electromagnetic wave to travel it doesn't require any medium just like a sound waves but it doesn't require any medium even in vacuum your the light wave travels so that is the most important thing which is said Elect electromagnetic wave travels in vacuum and doesn't require any medium and does not require any medium okay fine so now whenever we are studying certain see basically as i said this is not a physics topic it's only a chemistry topic which we are trying to relate to the movement of the light wave or the path of the light wave in the form of wave yes so apart from these maxwell's postulates or maxwell's assumptions what actually are we going to study we are supposed to study the different characteristics which are related to the wave so now we know light is, uh, is a form of energy and that's going to travel in the form of a wave. When the wave is traveling, both the magnetic and electrical field, they act perpendicularly to that propagation of wave. Along with this, you're supposed to learn certain characteristics of a wave. Right? When you're learning characteristics, well, let's see what, what characteristics do we have. We are going to learn the different characteristics. This is again a great seventh uh, topic, I think, which you've already learned. You'll be learning characteristics like wavelength. So, in uh, second, you will be learning characteristic like frequency, then you will be learning a characteristic called amplitude, we will also be learning characteristic called velocity and we will also be learning a characteristic called wave number. So, wavelength as you have already studied noted by lambda, your amplitude denoted by A your velocity denoted by small c, your frequency denoted by nu and wave number is the inverse of wavelength that is nu bar, isn't it? These are the different characteristics. So whenever you are learning your wave, you need to learn or know or I have an idea of what all these characteristics. So let's come back and learn what, okay, whenever you are learning characteristics, I will tell you some more thing. Whenever you are learning, definition nobody will give you, you know, no teacher will ask you to write the definition. Okay, this the representation also you very well know. What is important is the units which are related to this. And second important thing, how do you, how are you going to apply those units or the conversions of the formula in the numerical is important. So let me come back and start with the characteristics and the units. Right. Now let us come back and learn the definitions. As I said, definitions are not so important, but your the formula and the units are very important, right? So when I have to speak about the different characteristics, I've picked up wavelength, frequency, and amplitude together. Let us see in the graph first. So here we said light is a form of energy and it's going to travel in the form of an uh, wave, and that too that's called as electromagnetic wave, isn't it? Now this is your wave, isn't it? Fine. So this part, this is called crest and the depth or this one is called trough right. now when i have to speak about wavelength wavelength is always denoted by lambda yes so now what is wavelength now the distance between the consecutive crest and trough is called wavelength once again now this is the crest and this the depth is called the trough so what did i define wavelength is denoted by lambda and it is the distance between the consecutive crest and trough, the peak and the depth. Yes, that's wavelength. Now, what is frequency now? Just see here. Now, this is one wave. Like, it's start starting from here. It's traveling in this direction, isn't it? It's starting from here and this is one complete cycle. Yes. So, I'm marking this as in this way till here this is one complete cycle isn't it now this is called frequency now how is frequency denoted frequency is denoted by nu the weak letter nu that is nothing but nu fine so what is this it's it's a oscillation that is traveling one from one fixed point 
right so i'm picking up this point from here this is completing a cycle so the oscillation or the uh, that particular wave traveling under when you compare it with one fixed point that is in one second so you're comparing this part from one particular point that is frequency next when i have to come back to amplitude now this is your wave isn't it now what am i marking here from here till here is called amplitude what is this now the height is called amplitude the measure of this particular height of that wave is called amplitude amplitude is always denoted by small a fine so always this is measured in meters centimeters and picometers also amplitude so this is your concept now let's come back and see this table so whenever i see basically a wavelength we said studied about wavelength distance between crescent trough when we said frequency the number of oscillations from one particular point that also we said and then we spoke about the uh, amplitude height right so wavelength basically you've studied this formula c is equal to new lambda isn't it this is what you study from the same thing you are going to do the numericals and derive the unknown quantity so when i have to speak about wavelength i'm taking out lambda so the formula is for finding wavelength is c by mu or c by nu so the units where the wavelength is measured it is measured in angstroms it is measured in nanometers wavelength is measured in mu microns it is measured in microns it is also measured in picometers so this is where your concentration should be all these units whatever we have given angstrom nanometer mu microns microns and picometer all the conversions you should know right i did one concept dimension analysis in chapter 1 it's like that only so one angstrom is equal to 10 raised to the power of -8 cm and 10 raised to the power of -10 m which is equal to that so all the units you need to remember simple it is once you write you will get to know next important thing frequency the number of oscillations across a point so when i have to take again from the same formula i have taken new so this becomes c by lambda the units for measuring frequency is hertz or cps what is cps cycles per second so one one cps is equal to 1 hertz again i have taken it can be measured in 1 kilohertz and 1 megahertz also so all the three units i have given here please go through the units and practice it because i'll be using this in the numericals later amplitude as i said amplitude is a height or the measure or the magnitude of that particular wave which is measured in meter centimeter picometer right now let me let us come back and learn the velocity and wave number okay wave number i'll finish off now only what is basically wave number wave number is a reciprocal of your lambda so nu bar it is denoted by nu bar that is 1 by lambda what did i say reciprocal means the reverse of the wavelength so when i do do certain numericals you will get to know how how did i calculate just there is a reverse of the nu bar suppose you are getting Uh, wavelength as uh, you know you are getting as uh, as some answer in uh, 20 cm so 1 by the 20 cm is nothing but your wave number fine so nu bar is equal to 1 by lambda and lambda see basically lambda we have taken a c by nu isn't it now the reverse of this this also will become reverse and the unit for measuring um, new wave number is centimeter inverse and meter inverse basically here for new uh, wavelength we have taken centimeter and meter so the reverse of this becomes centimeter inverse and meter inverse right so we have studied wavelength we have studied frequency we have studied wave number we have studied amplitude the left over is velocity so which is denoted by small c yes so now this is your wave is it did how do i define velocity it's, it's basically like uh, okay uh, just simple how far how far has a wave traveled so the distance traveled by the wave in one second is velocity simple definition again a great seventh definition distance traveled by a wave in one second let us take one example suppose if i have to see uh, the sound traveling in air how much is the velocity sound traveling in air it is e is equal to 340 meters per second means this is the velocity of sound in air the same sound if it is sound in water it is almost 1400 we if i have to say the same okay light traveling in vacuum 
I said it travels in vacuum. It doesn't require any medium. That is equal to all in meters per second. 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So, the distance travelled, how much is the distance travelled by a wave in one second is velocity. So, velocity, it's, as I said, it is denoted by small c and from this formula, c is equal to a new lambda. The units for this is meters per second and centimeters per second.